Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about another league starter that I have that I may potentially be playing, which is going to be the Divine Ire and or Stormburst Trickster. The reason why I have both of these is because they're both channeling skills, they're both physical conversion to lightning, um, and they're both tagged as AoE. So they are very similar. I think the only difference is that Stormburst has a duration tag, so you can scale duration for more damage. But it's difficult to say how you want to scale the skill when you haven't played the skill. At least that's the way I theorycraft. Uh, and then, of course, as I've explained in my previous videos, uh, this doesn't really show anything regarding gear. It just has a baseline of certain stats. So this is mainly for the skill tree progression and the reasoning why I've chose certain things. So let's go ahead and start with Trickster. Or Mr. Trickster. The reason why I decided to play this as Trickster is a long time ago I actually played a Ghost Dance Escape Artist build and it was a lot of fun. The problem with it is it was very difficult to get Energy Shield. So I had a very defensive character but it only had like six to seven thousand ES and that's just not a lot. Nowadays with Delve and Dense Fossil Crafting you can get significantly higher Energy Shield values along with things like Stygian Belts and stuff like that. So the main reason for this character is testing out and having fun with the new Ghost Dance, which gives us um, Ghost Shrouds, which are really awesome because you gain a Ghost Shroud every second. And one of the big issues with playing evasion characters is mitigation. This gives you reduced damage taken per Ghost Shroud, which is very nice. And it says when hit, you lose a Ghost Shroud, which means if you take damage from Ignites or Degens, it's not gonna proc your Ghost Shroud. So you have to actually get hit. And since we're playing an evasion character, we should have a decent amount of evasion. Now, this is going to be a character that's leveling as ES. So if you're not interested in that, maybe you want to check out one of the other league starters that I have. Anyway, let's start with the beginning. Did I just change something? Oh, I did. I think I just put minion leech accidentally. Whoops. Okay. So starting from 1 to 20, you can see we're going through the Ellie damage. Uh, even though we have 50% conversion, we're going to be using Fizz to Lightning as soon as we get it in Act 2, which gives us immediately 100% Lightning conversion. Uh, I decided not to get Coordination because this isn't going to be an ES character, but feel free to get it if you want your early game to be easier. And of course, if you don't want to go crit early game, just take the Ellie damage route on pretty much everything. Um, so, moving on to the next one. Uh, remember that these nodes here, the Evasion and Energy Shield, are very good for leveling early game because they give you flat life and flat energy shield. So 21 to 40, you can see that we are rushing the new channeling nodes on the tree. Lucidity gives us chance to avoid being stunned, which doesn't really matter because we'll have stun immunity with our ascendancy. But the main thing is that channeling skills have minus to total mana cost. Channeling skills have a very low mana cost, but consume mana very quickly. So reducing the total mana cost of the skill is actually very nice for it. Uh, and you can see here, we the reason why I'm branching out here is so that we can get access to Written in Blood, since this is a hybrid cluster, and you want to make sure you don't die early game, so getting maximum life and energy shield early scales you really, really well. So, let's go ahead and push out the next one. I did swap around between Arcane Will. You have to figure out whether or not you want it. Uh, I don't really think you're going to need Arcane Will that early in the game. I did have it selected, but I forgot that Lucidity does give you the minus total mana cost. Um, so that is probably going to be fine, and you don't really have to get Arcane Will early. So you can see here, we decided to go straight up into Heart of Thunder, which gives us basically a shit ton of damage. Um, you can see here, we're pretty much starting to flesh out the crit. We've got the crit cluster here. For some reason, I don't know why this did that, but... We've got a crit cluster here, a crit cluster here, we've got the crit cluster here, and you even can grab nimbleness for the crit as well. I just haven't gotten it quite yet in the build. Uh, you can also see that I picked up Swift Killer as the first node because now you gain a power, um, a power or frenzy charge every second while you're channeling. So you don't have to kill anything and you don't have to like, you basically on a boss fight, you can even sustain your charges, which is really, really nice. And then I grabbed Ghost Dance next because of the 10% movement speed and of course tech checking out the new Ghost Shroud mechanic. So going to the next tree, which is 61 to 80, you can see we've now built on getting a ton more energy shield. Um, if you don't want to grab this early energy shield, you can grab Melding and then respec it after. Melding will make you better early game. This part is fucked up for some reason. There we go. You can also see that 
we have... I think we picked up the AoE before, but let's see. Nope, yep, that's pretty much everything. Oh yeah, we're, we grabbed Crackling Speed. Um, crackling Speed is a really strong one. Actually, I think it may be better to grab Nimbleness over Crackling Speed. I don't think I realized how good Crackling Speed was. Let's just, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, next up is the CI Respec that we have here. Um, so you should be pretty much good to go CI by this point. The reason why I say that is there are now these new nodes on the tree, uh, which give you spell damage leech as energy shield, which means you don't have to have Ghost Reaver. You can directly leech to your energy shield, which is really, really, really nice. Again, let's just switch these three here. Uh, we also picked up Arcane Will now. Again, you have to see how much energy shield it gives you because of the 4% of maximum mana as extra energy shield. So moving on to the next part of the tree is the 100 plus. You can see that we have filled in our jewel slots. We have filled in our shield nodes. You can also grab Arcane Swiftness whenever you'd like. Uh, Arcane Swiftness is a new node which gives crazy crazy damage and defenses. It's 5% cast speed while holding a shield, 5% spell damage for 5% chance to block attack damage. You also get the chance to avoid elemental ailments, which is not really something to rely on unless you have like 95%. Um, but anyway, it's just nice to have. And then of course you have the chance to block attack damage. So very, very, very strong. Uh, you can also see that there are these nodes on the tree here, Arcane Guarding. Arcane Guarding between these two points here gives you 100% increased energy shield from your equipped shield. This is also very, very, very strong for us. And then the last points I would recommend coming down here. Um, this is basically to just help with the evasion scaling. It's not really something mandatory or not. We're just trying to stick with the theme of basically staying evasion uh, because it's just something that's kind of, it's not new to me, but usually when I play my CI characters, they're just fat ES. Um, so I'm just curious to see how it turns out. Remember that you can also play Stormburst, and if you're looking to get skill effect duration with Stormburst, you can simply come down over here and grab your Potency of Will. And this will most likely be helping Alira. Of course, if you don't want to help Alira, you can just kill all and take your two skill points. So going on with the items, or yeah, with the items... Okay, so this is pretty much just with, for the most part, basic items. Um, this is a 274 ES shield with 1k evasion. This is a 300 ES helmet. This is a 420 evasion uh, chest piece with 50, sorry, 420 ES with 1500 evasion. I know these may seem like big numbers, but they're really, it's really not that much. And if this character is a little bit too complex for you, you may not want to try starting with the hybrid character and just sticking with an easier character. 180 ES gloves. I did tag Sintrek in here. They drop pretty frequently. They're not usually that expensive and it fits the character very well with the evasion theme. Um, the ES roll can go significantly higher. These are like minimum rolled, I'm pretty sure, or not minimum, but they're halfway. Uh, this is just 40 ES with 18% max and then just two ES rings with a bit of evasion, and then an Ascent from Flesh. This one is going to be a bit more difficult to get, but this does not give anywhere near the ES of like a properly rolled Crystal Belt, or potentially even a Stygian Vice, I think. Uh, but it, it is very nice, especially with the movement speed. So with this set here, uh, of course this is set for level 99, uh, but this puts you at 10k ES. If you were to even just shave off some numbers, 8,000 ES would still be totally fine. Even 6k ES as long as you have like 10k evasion with 6k ES, you are easily, easily able to map. Now, I have tagged in some interesting items here. Cerberus Limb uh, as a weapon, along with Aegis Aurora as a shield. I know that seems very weird, but Aegis Aurora with Cerberus Limb has a really unique interaction, which basically says that you get maximum energy shield per five armor on equipped shield. So by using an Aegis Aurora, it actually turns it into like a 400 ES shield. You do lose a bit of evasion, but you gain the plus to max cold res. So it's just kind of something to think about depending on the way you want to play your character. But vice versa, if I were to drop Aegis Aurora for the, uh, you know, the simple shield that we crafted, not titanium, where's the, here we go, Supreme Spike Shield. 
If you look at our evasion right now, our evasion is 1400 or 14,000. It goes to 18, but our ES does go down. That's just kind of something, like I said, to think about depending on how you want to play your character. Um, nothing is finalized. It's just items I was playing around with. Uh, and then in terms of the skills, it was kind of difficult to tag in the skills because they're kind of new and they're literally not on the program yet. Um, so as of right now, the only thing I'm running is like Discipline and maybe Wrath because of the way Wrath works. Uh, of course, you could try the new aura, which is the 50% reservation, but this gives you room for, um, let's see, 50 plus 35, you have 85% mana reserved. So you've got 15% unreserved, which is more than enough to cast, considering that the new nodes now, as I showed you before, oopsies, cancel. Let me just go back to the tree. You do have Arcane Will, which is naturally mana regen, along with Energy Shield, and you have Lucidity, which gives you the minus the total mana cost. But just to show you guys some of what I'm talking about on the new channeling nodes and stuff, uh, or sorry, items, let me just bring it up. Not items, skills, here we go. So there is the new Infused Channeling Support, which basically was the old Storm Barrier, it now makes it so that infusion lasts for six seconds after you finish channeling, which is crazy. So you get 39% more damage. You take reduced physical, which is great for evasion and ES builds in general. Uh, and then on top of that, based off of the tags of your skill gem, you also take reduced and deal extra damage. It's kind of, kind of clunky and kind of weird, but this would work for both of the channeled skills that I was referring to. Now, if you decide you want to play more of a leech character, there is more. There, there's a new uh, support gem as well called Energy Leech Support, which actually gives you a huge steroid of damage, assuming that you're actively leeching. Now, if you were to do a full leech build, you would come over and you would grab Ghost Reaver. If you wanted to kind of move some points around, you could connect here and drop Crackling Speed for it. So that's an option as well. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, you would be using Fizzed Lightning at the beginning. Now, since this is a level 28 skill, you will not be able to level with it right away. I think Storm Burst you can get much easier, uh, but since you're leveling elemental damage at the start, you can just use something like Freezing Pulse. Freezing Pulse will take you all the way until you're able to get your associated skills. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much going to be about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Take care, everyone. Hope you guys have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all at League Start.